Good evening YouTube. Primeval AO here from Green Bay Outdoors coming to you with another installment of the Compact uh, Bear Grylls Parang Refurbish. Uh, I was finally able to get the handle on and I'm very pleased with the results. Um, if you see my prior videos you know uh, what I've done with the blade itself and the kind of uh, uh, challenges I've had with the handle. Um, but again my body our buddy did come through with a block of the wood and I was finally able to get an inch and a half wide piece of it off that would be perfect for this. Um, here will be two uh, slides for it and um, I will be doing slides. I don't have any video uh, material showing the process because I'm not a good videographer. I can't edit well and this is pretty much my like seventh take doing this. Anyways, without further ado, here is the finished blade itself, the finished parade. I'm very happy with it. I've tested it. It works beautifully. Uh, and I, I couldn't be more pleased with how I, I was able to make this. But again, uh, when, when I got the block off, the, the end piece, I was able to uh, rough out a shape for it. And I used that to go ahead and burn the tang into the, um, into the block because I was very fearful, again, of it uh, splitting on me. Uh, I wanted as much material there as possible to help support and uh, give uh, structure to it. So I burned it in. Once I got it burned in, I uh, actually made a mistake of drilling the pilot hole for this uh, retaining pin uh, very, very early in the process. Uh, that did cause the pin to be a little offset. I'm not sure if you can see that there. Um, so as I did burn in the tang, um, I was jokingly telling my buddy, says, you know, I really don't know what uh, what the process is to help avoid uh, compromising the integrity of steel when you reheat it after it's possibly been hardened and tempered. And I actually joked and said, oh, maybe I'll warp it, which indeed I warped it. So I did have to take some time to reheat it, not up to a red hot, or even close to you know any type of glowing and get it hammered back in place so it's nice and straight uh, which you'll see here uh, so uh, I did get it back straightened and that may be uh, another reason why the retaining pin is uh, all centered um, now after um, all of that hoopla I did take it to the belt sander and shape it down roughly to something similar to this shape um, the problem was is that there are certain areas that was just too out of reach for the belt sander. The, the circumference on the ends was just too too wide and I wasn't happy with how it was looking. It was more of a uh, curved uh, Cessna or something. I don't know. Um, I really wasn't happy with it, but um, this is what I came up with. And then I decided to take uh, a Dremel and get deep into this curve here, not only here, but on the sides, and give it more of a very uh, pit uh, pistol grip kind of feel so my pinky or the end of my hand could fit in there nice and snug, and I don't have to worry about it slipping off because of the knot here. Okay. So, after all that, um, what I did was I took a uh, quarter inch steel rod, cut off enough pin or enough material to uh, get it to fit. Uh, before I could do that, I had to uh, reshape or, or drill the uh, a hole bigger in the actual handle. And I had to reduce the actual material of the pin itself by using my drill and belt sander. Uh, which helped a whole lot. Um, once I got all that done, um, I did go in and use a file 
a very uh, small final system to get the uh, soot out of here so the uh, the epoxy could retain the uh, or the tang excuse me in the material without a problem um, then when I did epoxy it all together I did have to use shims to uh, fill in uh, different areas here because when I when I burned it in it did move side to side here uh, that's I, I don't know why maybe I was touching the sides when I was pushing it in but anyways I put shims in here with epoxy uh, hammered them down so they're nice and snug um, then I put in the retaining pin uh, uh, filed it down to where it's a little bit uh, flush with the handle and then peened it down so it's a nice you know retaining and and the only reason for this is the retain of it I have full faith in the epoxy and the shims but that just added uh, added security for me okay so a buddy of mine he actually I wasn't going to stain this I was uh, I originally was a firm believer of the natural wood look I would use boiled linseed oil and just keep it as natural as possible but uh, he gave me um, a small can of red oak stain um, I did a test uh, test material on it which is somewhere I can't find right now but the difference is that, oh here it is <clears throat> the difference is just amazing this is the unfinished or unstained portion of the block that I used this is the stained portion this is just after about two minutes and it really brought out the grains. So, you know, I, I really fell in love with this. Much so that I redid my uh, uh, Guidesman knife handle. I, I stripped it down of the finish and the uh, sealant and uh, uh, used the stand on it. And I'll show you that in a different video. But anyways, so I'm really happy with this. Um, I am using the current... Bear Grylls sheets for it just just to hold it you know just to protect it from the elements uh, like I said I have used it extensively uh, it's got a nice chop to it um, if I you know choke up on the, on the back I can get a good angle and really really detailed chopping here and then of course here the flat area nice fine work so uh, thank you guys for watching um, I will be trying to do a uh, sheath for this. Um, I don't know what kind of material yet, but stay tuned.